Hey there, have you ever wanted to make a cool sunburst design, kind of like what you're seeing right here with this Rival Digital logo in the orange? I'm sure if you were in the HVAC industry, you've seen designs like this on van wraps, on websites and print materials, because this is kind of a popular design that you will see in this industry for many reasons. One, uh, because it looks cool, but two, mostly important. Uh, is because it looks, it's kind of got this retro nostalgic throwback look to it. Uh, and that's kind of a popular design style in the home services and HVAC industry. So in this video, I'm going to quickly show you how you can make a design just like this on your own without having to hire um, a creative person to do it for you. So obviously, first you're going to want to have Photoshop. Uh, and you can get a Photoshop plan from Adobe for $9.99 a month. It's, it's literally like 10 bucks for Photoshop and Lightroom. Uh, it's the photography plan if you're interested. And so there's free versions out there online like PhotoP, uh, which is spelled P-E-A and not P-E-E. -E, so don't type that in. Uh, but you can do that on the browser. You can also do it on Photoshop. That's the one I prefer because it just it outputs the cleanest design uh, and you're able to do way more with it than the free browser based versions. So once you have Photoshop installed on your computer, uh, now what you'll do is you will open up a new document and you're going to want to do a few things before you get started. So first you're going to want to set your width and your height, uh, for this design. I'm doing 1080 by 1080 because this is for an Instagram post. And then the most important thing you're going to want to do is make sure that the background contents are set to transparent. Uh, you've got other options here white, black, background color. We want transparent. So once you have those settings all created, you hit create. And now you have a blank transparent document. So how to create the sunburst effect. The first thing you're going to want to do is set your foreground and background colors. And you'll do that over here on this color selector. So right now I've got an orange and then like a darker orange set up. So in order to change these, you can just click on those squares and you'll get a color picker. So you can make it whatever color you want just by dragging this little thing all over it. Uh, but for this one, we are going to use Rival Digital's orange. Hit OK. And then you'll set your background color by clicking on that one. And then you can drag it around and do whatever there. The most important thing to note here is that you want your darker color in the back and your lighter color in the front. Um, you can do it the other way around. That's just the way I prefer to do it. So once you have those colors selected, you're going to need to select the gradient tool. And so typically when you open up Photoshop, it's going to by default be this paint bucket tool. Now to change it to the gradient tool, you'll hover over the paint bucket. You will right click. Uh, and then you've got different options here. You'll select the gradient tool. There's keyboard shortcuts for all of this. I just prefer to manually find it with the mouse because I guess I enjoy wasting time. So once you have the gradient tool selected, you'll have your gradient uh, preview here. This is what it's going to look like. You'll want to make sure it's set to linear mode normal, opacity 100%, and then these two chosen as well. These are the default settings, so you really don't have to worry about that too much. So once you're ready to start, you're going to identify kind of a center point of the document. Uh, you can set up some different things that will show you kind of like a grid pattern of where the center is. I like to just eyeball it because it doesn't make a huge difference. So this kind of looks like the center right here. So you're going to hold down shift and you're going to take a left click with your mouse and drag this line straight through the document. And then you let go. And now you have a gradient background. Now, this is where things get a little funny. And this is also where the magic happens. So you want to make sure that you pay attention for this next step. Once you have your gradient on the document, you will go up to where it says filter. You're going to see a drop down with all these cool options. We're going to choose the one that says distort. Once again, you'll see another drop down, and we are going to choose the one that says wave. Now you get some more options here, uh, and there's a few things to make sure that you do on this step. So you want to make sure that the type is set up for square. You don't want triangle. You don't want sign. You want square. Now, number of generators, I keep this at 70. Wavelength, this determines kind of how many uh, 
bars you'll get on the design. So you'll see if you drag this, you'll get like kind of a, a, a change. You'll get more spread out, thicker ones. Uh, if you keep dragging it, you'll see you'll get less and less. So I like to keep these right around 90 or so. You can do less if you want. Um, but yeah, I like to keep it around 90. That way you get a lot of lines out of it. Uh, but yeah, right here, it's really up to you to see how many lines you want. But whatever you do, you want to make sure that they're a similar uh, number for both. So we'll make both 93 and 93. Amplitude, I keep this one on one for the minimum. I keep the max around 120 or so. This kind of just helps give it a little bit more overlay uh, if you have a lighter color. Uh, but since these are darker, we don't have to worry about it too much. So you get 121 and that. Make sure both of these are set to 100%. And then you click on OK. Now we have bars going straight through the document. So if you wanted to make a design that looks like this, that's how you would do it. But this is not what we're going for here. So the next step, and this is where the pattern comes in, we will go back up to filter. You go back down to distort, and then you select polar coordinates. Now you'll see a preview of, of what this is. This is obviously the sunburst effect. You can choose polar to rectangular. It kind of gives you this weird looking jivey weird thing. We don't want that. We want rectangular to polar. So once that's selected, you hit OK. And now you have your sunburst effect. And this is the part where you can um, throw an image over top of it. You could put you know, more designs on it if you wanted. Um, but this is really how you do it. So I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if it was, give us a like and a subscribe, maybe a comment. Uh, and there'll be more tutorials coming out soon, so stay tuned.